Hello, thank you so much for watching us again. Uh, we thank God for giving us this opportunity to meet again on this channel. Uh, see, remain Alira Daniel, your teacher of physics and mathematics. Uh, today we are discussing, as you are aware, we are started a discussion already on linear motion. Where in our previous lesson, we saw some of the terms which are used in linear motion. We talked about distance, we said distance is just the length between two points, and we said it's a scalar quantity. And uh, we talked about displacement, where we said displacement is just the distance moved in the specified direction and is a vector quantity. So the main difference between displacement and uh, distance was we said that the main difference was like displacement is a vector quantity meanwhile on the other hand distance is a scalar quantity we never stop there we discuss velocity and speed we said speed is a rate of, rate of change of distance meanwhile velocity is a rate of change of displacement where we also looked at the difference between displacement i mean speed and velocity and we said that uh, velocity is a vector quantity while speed is a scalar quantity. Much as all of them are measured in meters per second, but they differ in terms of vector quantity and scalar quantities. We never stopped there. We looked at acceleration. If you remember very well, we said acceleration is the rate of change of this, I mean of velocity. Yes, is the rate of change of velocity. That was an acceleration. And he said it's also a vector quantity measured in meters per second squared. We looked at how to convert from meters per second to kilometers per hour or kilometers per hour to meters per second where I left you with some exercises to do and uh, I believe you did them and they came out well. In case you miss any lesson, I mean in case you miss that lesson, I request you to go back and check. Go back on this very channel, then you watch lesson one under linear motion before you come to this. So today I want us to discuss equation of linear motion. That's what we're discussing today. Equation. Uh, there are basically three equations of linear motion uh, As we are yet to see there are basically three equations of linear motion We have what to be the first equation of motion We have what to be the second equation of motion and lastly what to be the third equation of motion Now to start with let's see first equation of motion. What do we call to be the first equation of motion? first equation of motion when we are talking about first equation of motion of course we consider a body which started with a velocity u and he said the starting velocity is always called here to be the initial velocity and the initial velocity we denote it with the letter u so the initial velocity we are saying we are considering a body which started moving with the initial velocity u so we consider the initial velocity initial velocity to be u meters per second so a body started with initial velocity u and it moved for a certain time t and its velocity increased or reduced to v that becomes our final velocity we are saying after time t let's say after time equals to t the final velocity the final velocity became v meters per second so a body started with the initial velocity u 
it moved and its velocity increased to v in time t then the question would be what is the change in velocity what would be the change in velocity so he said change in velocity now change in velocity change in velocity is going to be the final velocity minus the initial velocity which is v minus u then from there we define an acceleration remember the definition of an acceleration we said acceleration acceleration is the rate of change of, the, of velocity so it is change in velocity change in velocity then divided by time change in velocity divided by time that is our acceleration so if you have to write it mathematically we shall have acceleration a to be because change in velocity our change in velocity is v minus u so it will be equal to v minus u then divided by t then from here we cross multiply when we cross multiply this will multiply this this will multiply this will be over one so v minus u multiplied by one you get v minus u to be equal to a times t you get a t then from here we take u the other side don't forget that it is a minus, so when it crosses the other side, it will be a plus. We shall have finally v to be equal to u plus a t. This is the first equation of motion. The first equation of motion says v equals u plus a t. Where v is the final velocity, a is the acceleration and t is the time taken for this body to change its velocity from v to, I mean from u to v. That would be the first equation of motion. For us to enjoy very well linear motion, we need to know the first equation of motion. Not knowing how to state, but where does it come from? We are saying, if you consider body starting with initial velocity u, and move for time t and the velocity change to v then the change in velocity is going to be v minus u but from the definition of acceleration which you saw in the previous lesson we said acceleration is the rate of change of velocity so that means acceleration equals to change in velocity divided by time so change in velocity is v minus u over t then making v the subject of the formula you come up with v equals to u plus a t that is first equation of motion hope you have got it well okay fine let's look at second equation of motion Second equation of motion. Let's look at second equation of motion. Second equation of motion. Of course, this one is like a ladder. You cannot go to second equation when you don't know the first equation, okay? So we need to first know the first equation of motion before you go to second equation of motion. Now, second equation of motion gives us the, time, the distance traveled by a body in a certain time t. It gives us the distance traveled by a body in a certain time t. That is how, I mean, that is second equation of motion. So, we start from the expression of total distance traveled. So total distance traveled, total distance traveled 
or the total distance covered, you know, from the definition, is the same as the average speed then divided by the time. So it is average speed times time. You know, distance is equal to speed times time, right? So the total distance travel is the average speed times the total time which has been taken. Good. Now from there, our total distance traveled here, we denote it with the letter S, okay? Letter S denotes the total distance traveled. Then how do we get the average speed? Uh, you know from mathematics, when I say you get the average of three numbers, you have to get those three numbers, sum of the three numbers, divided by three. If I want average of four numbers, you get the sum of four numbers divided by four. So if I want average of two numbers, I add those two numbers and then they divide by two. So when a car or a body moves for a certain distance, that means the velocity will have changed from u, which was initial velocity, to v, which became the final velocity. So if the initial velocity was 20 meters per second, and the final velocity was 50 meters per second and I asked you to get the average speed then I expect you to get 20 plus 50 then after you divide by 2 in other words, the average velocity is given by V plus U divided by 2 is that okay? fine so it is V plus U it is V plus u divided by what? Divided by 2. That gives us the average velocity. So the total distance travel I told you is given by, denoted by s, equals the average velocity, which is v, then plus u, but we are dividing by what? We are dividing by 2, then times the time, which is t. But, we have already seen that V equals to U plus AT from the first equation. So this V, we pick it and we substitute it here. So where there is V, we substitute U plus AT, U plus AT. Now, what will this equation be? You can see S is going to be, instead of U, a V, I'll put U plus AT. That is V. V is U plus AT. But remember, we are saying plus another U, it is V, which is the same as U plus AT. So you're putting U plus AT. But plus U, then the whole thing we are dividing by what? Dividing by 2, then times T. So from here, we shall have our S to be equal to U plus U, that is 2U plus a t then the whole thing divided by 2 times t now we can put this t inside so s equals 2 uh, this will be 2 u t and a t squared yeah this t will multiply 2 u and this t will also multiply a t so we shall have 2 u t plus a T squared. But the whole thing is being divided by what? Being divided by 2. Now, if I have, let's say, 4 plus 8 divided by 2, if the whole thing is being divided by 2, I'm free to say this is 4 over 2 plus 8 over 2. In other words, 2 is going to divide both 4 and 8. So it is the same as 4 over 2 plus 8 over what? Over 2. That's the same thing which is here. I have 2ut plus 8t squared. So I'm going to give this 2ut its own 2. I will give 8t squared also its own what? 2. So eventually, s will be what? s is going to be 2ut, I will give it its own 2 plus. 8t squared, I will also give it its own 2. So this is 8t squared, I will also give it its own what? 2. 
So the two of these will go with the other one. So you write the S to be equal to UT plus AT squared is the same as just uh, AT squared over 2 is the same as just a half AT squared. So this is just a half then AT squared. This is the second equation of motion. A physicist like you, like me, must know that the second equation of motion says S equals to UT plus a half AT squared. Oh my gosh, this is real physics. S, the distance traveled, should be equal to the velocity, initial velocity, U times the time plus a half of the acceleration times the time squared. I like that physics. Oh, you like it too, yes? <laughs> oh my god. Oh, 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 oh. So, this is the first equation of motion. This is the second equation of motion. Now, I told you we have three equations of motion. So far, you have already seen the first one. You have already seen the second one. Let us see the third. Now, where does the third come from? The first one you have seen it comes from the definition of acceleration. The second one comes from the definition of average speed, average, I mean total distance traveled. Then the third, where does it come from now? It comes from combining the first and the second. Oh my God. It doesn't come from anywhere else, but it comes from combining equation one and equation two. So in this case, what we do, we make T the subject of the formula in the first equation. We make T the subject of the formula. After making T the subject of the formula, we substitute in the second equation. Oh, good. Let's see that. Third equation of motion. Let's see third equation of motion. Third equation of motion. So as I told you, third equation of motion does not come from anywhere else, but it comes from combining the first equation with the second equation of motion. And you're saying, it is from the first equation, from first equation, we make T the subject of the formula. So far we have V to be equal to U plus AT. AT. So we bring this on this side, remember our main aim is to make T the subject of the formula. So we bring this on this side, we shall get V minus U to be equal to AT. Once T the subject of the formula, so you divide O through by A, O through by what? O through by A. So this A will go with the other A. We shall have T to be equal to V minus U, but over what? Over A. This is making T the subject of the formula. Then after making T the subject of the formula, you go to the second equation. Where there is T, you put V minus U over A. You get that? Oh, good. Let me hope you get it, right? So, you make T the subject of the formula in the first equation, okay? Then you put it in the second equation. So, when there's T in the second equation, we shall not write T, but rather we shall write V minus U over A. Is that okay? Sure. Oh, fine. Let's go to, let's substitute. Now you're saying from second equation. From second equation now. Remember our second equation says S equals to UT plus a half A T squared. So our S, I say you bring now this 
T and you put it here. You bring this one now and you put it there. So we shall have our S to be equal to, first of all, it will be U into. Now this T is not T, but it is V minus U over A. So this will be V minus U but over A. I cross this. Then plus 1 over 2 A in 2. This is not just T, but it's V minus U over A, but also again what T? Squared. Remember it's T squared, okay? It is T squared, so it's a half A T squared. So we have a half A. We put T, which is V minus U, but we square it. So after squaring, we manipulate this, we shall come up with the third equation of motion. So, we shall have S to be equal to, these are the same as, this one of course you will multiply the upper one, so it is the same as U into V minus U the whole thing is over A. Then, plus, the square will go on this alone. This square will go on the upper one. It will also go on the downer part. In other words, we are squaring the upper part and we are also going to square the denominator. You square the numerator and the denominator. So we shall have 1 over 2A. Then here, we shall have V minus U, but squared, divided by A should also be squared. So A should also be squared. So you can see that this A is going to reduce the power of the other A. This A will reduce the power of the other A. So we remain with S equals to U into V minus U u into v minus u but over a then plus remember there's nothing on top here now apart from v minus u squared what this a has cancelled with the other one so we remain with the one times v minus u squared so you get only v minus u but uh, squared then over down we have 2, but there's also a. So it is 2 times a, which is 2, I think, which is 2a. Is that okay? So this is 2a. Good. Then from there, we take the LCM. S equals 2, we take the LCM. LCM is, we have a and 2a. What is the LCM? <laughs> 2 and a, what is the LCM? A and 2A, what's the LCM? LCM is 2A, right? Good. So the LCM is 2A. So we said 2A divided by A. A, A will go. You remain with the 2. So 2 times this. So you get 2U into V minus U. Close. Plus. 2A divided by 2A, that is 1. 1 times V minus U squared you get v minus u close square. Good. So, I want us to look at this upper part very well. If you look at it very well, you realize that there is a common factor. I don't know whether you can see that. Yes, there is a common factor. v minus u is here. v minus u is there. Is that okay? We have V minus U here and V minus U there. So we pull out this V minus U. So we pull out V minus U. We have V minus U. Then if I pull out V minus U from here, what do I remain with? I remain with only this 2U. Because this V minus U is already out here. Is that okay? 
So V minus U is already out here. So I remain with only two what? Two U. So this is two U plus V minus U. V minus U. I pulled it out already. So pulling it out, remember it is squared. So I remain with one of the V minus U. Okay. So pulling out one from here, I remain with one. I remain with one V minus U. But of course, this is over to N. So S is going to be V minus U into. Now, this is 2U plus V minus U. First of all, 2U will be reduced by U. So when you reduce 2U by U, you remain only with U. So here we shall have V first of all, then 2u minus u, it is just u, positive u. Please check. 2u minus u is positive u. So it is v plus u, then divided by 2a. Good. I like, there's some mathematics here now. I want you to observe here. v minus u into v plus u, that is real mathematics. Uh, you remember we saw mathematics of a squared a squared minus b squared this is difference between two squares which can be expressed as a plus b into a minus b so likewise I can say a plus b into a minus b is the same as a squared minus b squared what about if i have v plus u into v minus u what is it equal to hello How, what is it equal to if a plus b into a minus b is a squared minus b squared then what about v plus u into v minus u is the same as v squared minus u squared good so this is difference between two squares this is difference between two squares v minus u into v plus u is just the same as v squared minus u squared then of course we shall divide it divide it by 20 to a Good. Then from here we cross multiply. When you cross multiply, we shall have v squared minus u squared times 1, which is v squared minus u squared. Equals to uh, s times 2a. What do you get? What is s times 2a? Yes, you get 2a what? 2a squared. Then from there, we take this u the other side. Remember, it's a minus, so once it crosses the other side, it will be a plus. So eventually, this side shall remain with v squared only. To be equal to here, we shall have u squared, then plus 2ax. This is what we call to be the third equation of motion. Oh my God. It is as sweet as physics. That is physics, my friend. Physics is very sweet. They say that it's sweeter than cuckoo, but I don't know what the cuckoo is. I think cuckoo is chicken. Do you like chicken? Oh, good. So that is that when it comes to the third equation of motion. Please, you don't need to just know the equation. But you should know where it comes from. I say it comes from like after combining equation one with equation two, you get the expression. So in summary, in summary, we have three equations of motion, of which we have just derived them. The first equation is V equals to U plus A T. The second one is S 
equals to ut plus a half a t squared. Then thirdly is v squared equals to u squared plus 2ax. These are the three equations of linear motion. You need to know one, stating them, then two, you need to know the parameters which are used. If I talk about v, if I talk about u, what are they? Then lastly, you should know how to use them. We are going to see how to use them in our next lesson. Thank you so much for being part of this. In case of any question, don't hesitate. Go in the live chat and you type there and let me know where the problem is and the rest we shall handle. This bring us, brings us to the end of this lesson. Make sure you follow the lesson very well. You understand everything here so that when we resume to the calculation bit of it in our next lesson, you were well conversant with this already. Uh, allow me to stop here for now. We shall continue from there in our next lesson. Please, if you have not subscribed, don't forget to subscribe. There's a red button there, subscribe, just tap on it, okay? Tap on subscribe and to be recorded immediately. You'll get notifications in case of any video. Thank you so much. Goodbye for now. See you in the next lesson. Goodbye.